Hello, everyone. Welcome to today's webinar, which is on Core Azure Services. My name is Dipanshu Mittal. I am Certified Trainer of Azure, Microsoft Azure from GTEC Learn. Uh, so today we will study Core Azure Services. So before moving forward, please confirm in chat box that my screen is visible to all of you. Thanks for confirming. Let's move forward. So here is our uh, webinars agenda where we will study Azure architectural components, Azure workload products, Azure networking services, Azure storage services. And after that, there will be a demo session where we will see how uh, we can uh, practically do the things we studied in today's webinar and after that there will be a five minutes question and answer session so the overall uh, timing of uh, this webinar will be 45 minutes so let's move forward so the first thing is azure architectural components so by name itself it is defined like from which key components uh, our azure portal is made up of so there are so many uh, components like Azure subscription, management group, resource group, uh, virtual machine, app services, storage account, container, availability zone, and region pair. The first one is Azure subscription. Like if you want to uh, purchase any services uh, under the Azure, like uh, if you want to deploy a virtual machine, firstly, you need a subscription. So subscription provides you with the authenticated and authorized access to Azure products and services. It also allows you to uh, provision resources and Azure subscription is a logical unit of Azure services that links to a Azure account. So, uh, even you can have uh, multiple uh, subscription uh, based on like uh, groups, uh, based on different different units. So the first thing you have, you must have as your subscription so that uh, if you want to use the services of Microsoft Azure. Moving to next, the next thing is like uh, management group. So management group is basically, for example, uh, if a company has a multiple organization under a company, like the uh, one unit is uh, for sales, another one is for like, uh, production, another one is for service, another one is for human resource. So to all the management group, uh, to to all, the, uh, so they are, uh, all are have different subscription of Azure subscription, then they will be divided into a different, different management group. So to under management group, uh, we can uh, set a policy, we can set security policy, we can set access as well. Uh, also, we can uh, set the compliance for all these resources. So basically, uh, under management group, we can simplify the things and working of different different groups. So there can be multiple groups, uh, and under that uh, management group, there can be another multiple groups also. So there can be groups in the parent group also. After that, there is a resources. So resources are like uh, whatever the services uh, uh, given by Azure you want to use are come under resources. So there are resource group, virtual machine, app services, storage account, etc. So the first one is like resource group. So if you want to deploy a virtual machine or something like that, uh, firstly, you need to create a resource group. Under resource group, uh, you can create virtual machine, VNet, VPN, storage account. Everything will be uh, deployed under a particular group. That, will, that group is called as resource group. After that, a virtual machine, virtual machine means a machine deployed on a cloud, means you don't have any, you don't have any physical server. You just deploy a virtual machine and have an access from your physical machine. After that, there is app services under app services like uh, you can uh, use uh, 
mobile app you can deploy a mobile app uh, you can uh, create a web app and after that there are a storage account means if you want to store something on cloud you can use the services of storage account after that there are a region so a region is a geographical area on the planet that contains at least one but potentially multiple data centers that are nearby and network together with the low latency network so basically why do we need a, to know about a region for example uh, if you want to deploy a machine uh, on a particular location you will select a particular the nearest region for example there are so uh, so many uh, azure regions like west us canada central west europe australia east japan west so they are multiple regions so it gives you more flexibility to bring application closer to your user no matter where they are so it also provides better scalability and redundancy so so these are uh, this is all about regions so there are region pairs also so can anyone tell, uh, tell me what are region pair so the region pair is like uh, the one region is interconnected to another region so that if uh, in any case a uh, one data center got destroyed or uh, due to like some unfavorable conditions like uh, tsunami thunderstorm etc so that uh, your data will be safe because the two regions are interconnected to each other so basically the two regions are at least 300 miles away from each other geographically so if a disaster comes to one place then uh, another region should not be affected after that there are availability zone so in a region itself there is a availability zone means under that availability zone there are multiple data centers which are connected by a wired connection so this was all about is your architectural components after that there are is your workload products uh, where uh, we can use the different different products like virtual machines storage account virtual network app services sql database uh, function and many more workload products so after that uh, there are some demos we will see one by one let me uh, share my azure portal so we can see just wait for a minute i hope my screen is visible to all of you so this is our azure portal and we will walk through this azure portal so here you can see there is a all services so in all services like there are so many services uh, general services where we can uh, manage subscription uh, quick start center management group cost management service help so free services all are comes under general services of microsoft azure then compute services where you can see virtual machine uh, batch account host function app container instances disk cloud services availability set vm image so all comes under net compute section after that there are networking section storage section web section mobile app container all comes under all the services of microsoft azure now we will see how we can create a virtual machine for that just go for uh, so step here you just type virtual machine so here you just hit on create virtual machine here there is a no resource group you can create a new resource group after that you can name a 
new virtual machine after that which region you have to select to uh, deploy virtual machine after that you can select security type after that you can select image so means which uh, image you want to get deployed like you can have multiple options here after that size even you can change the size like uh, you want one cpu two cpu how much gb ram so everything you can select here after that you can select the users and password here you can after that there are uh, inbound port rules and after that there is a disk so under this you can see uh, different settings as well after that there is networking then you can go for management as well then advanced then tags after that after setting all the things you will hit on review and create and then after final validation uh, you go uh, then you can create a virtual machine it will take almost uh, three to four minutes to create a virtual machine so this was all about how we can create a virtual machine so moving to our next spectacle so just give me a minute so our next practically practical is how we can create a web app so for that moving back to our azure portal So just go to research bar here. Just search here app services. Click on create. So here create a new resource group demo. So here give a web app name. I'm giving it name my docker. So here in a publish, you select docker container operating system will be Linux, then East US. After that, everything go on default after that we go to docker section in docker section you will select single container after that image source will be docker hub after that access type will be public then here we select uh, image and tag after that we hit on review and create So after final validation, we will be able to create a web app. So hit on just create. So it will take one or two minutes to deploy a web app. After that, we can even check whether our web app is deployed successfully or not. So it is taking more than usual. So here our deployment is successful. Just go to resource. Sometimes uh, it's take, it takes like four to five minutes to get updated. So here in overview, just copy it. Here its status is running, but sometimes uh, it takes like five to 10 minutes to get activated. So just here and don't enter. So here you can see that welcome to Azure container instances means your web app 
has been deployed successfully. So now moving back to our PPT. So our next uh, is how to create a virtual network. So we'll see that going back to our Azure portal. So firstly, we will create a virtual network. For that, just search virtual network on search tab. It don't create. After that, resource group under resource group, uh, create a new source group demo RG. Okay. So after that, give a name. So we'll give a name BNet1. In ECUS, then we will view create. Then hit on create. So after deployment of our virtual network, we will create two virtual machine under same virtual network. Then we will ping from one machine to another machine. For that, I'll just go to resource. Let's see. So here are like our resource group is demo RG. Its location is East US. So everything is here. Refresh it as well. So here, no device is connected to it. Now we'll create a virtual machine under this virtual network. Again, go to virtual machines. Create a virtual machine. So in resource group, we'll select demo RG. Then we give a name PM1 in East US. Windows Server 2019 Data Center Generation 2, D2 V3. After that, we will set the username and password. So here I am setting on my name. You can set any name you want to. the same password again so in inbound port rule a low selected port after that in networking section here just enter the virtual network you created here it is not showing uh, it will take like four to five minutes sometimes or just enter that virtual network one. So here it is not showing, just give me a second. So now it's showing and here you can create it. Just hit on create. So it will take four to five minutes to deploy here virtual machine
So we are just so here our deployment is complete. Now we will create a, another VM, which is under the same resource group demo RG. So its name will be VM2 East US Standard Generation 2. Here just change the username. So here, after in networking section, it's already selected VNet1, or we can drop down or select the same network we create uh, we selected in previous creation. After that, public I will be VM2 IP. So here, just hit on review and create. After the final validation, so it will be. for creation. So it's just one or two minute task pending. Everything is so okay. So now our another VM is also created. We can check also here in a virtual machine. We can see VM1 and VM2, both are in East US and this is in creating. So just refresh the page. And here you can see that both are running. Even if you go to our, your virtual network in, in VNet, you can see that the, both the virtual machine are connected to this virtual network and their IP addresses are these. Okay, so now we will go to remote session of virtual machines. Firstly, we will go to VM1. So in VM1, go to connect RDP and then we will download a file after that, just open this file. Hit on connect. Here, and all the details. Hit on OK. After that, just hit on yes. So your VM is getting connected. So now you can see that. So here you are in a remote session of virtual machine one. So here 
if you open your virtual machine for first time, they will automatically open the server manager. You have to just close it. So here we close the server manager. So in the same way, we will go to the remote session of virtual machine second. So here, just click on connect an RDP. Then download RDP. And just check on it. So same here. Yes. And now we are in a remote session of our virtual machine setting. So here this is also a newly deployed virtual machine. So there will be some pop-up icons. So just have to close them. So now we have a remote session of both the virtual machine. So to ping from one machine to another, firstly, we have to stop the firewall. For that, just go to setting, both the machines, go to network and internet, here Windows firewall. So here, just off all the window defender firewall. So now you can see that. So same we have to do in virtual machine second as well. Just go to setting. Network and internet. Windows firewall. After that, set it off. So now firewall and both the Windows are both the virtual machine is off. Just go back to our first virtual machine. We'll ping the second virtual machine from virtual machine one. So just go here and search PowerShell. So here click on run as administrator. So here just type pink vm2 and hit on enter. So here you can see the reply like pinging vm2 the reply from that virtual machine uh, whose uh, IP address was 10.0.0.5. So you can see that packets sent four and then you can see received four. Now we will go back to our second virtual machine and we will ping virtual machine one there. Just search here, 
search here PowerShell. Just enter here ping VM one. So here you can see that uh, we have uh, connected a or pinged a VM one from VM two. So this was all possible because both the virtual machines are connect interconnected to each other from VNet one. So this was all about our practical that how we can create a virtual network and then how we can interconnect two machines through a virtual network. So this was all about this practical. Now in, in closing this remote session, So now we are back to our Azure portal. Now moving back to our PPT. So our next practical is how we can create a blob storage. For that, let's go back to our Azure portal. Just give me a second. So here, but we search here, we just search here storage account. On the storage account, just hit on create. So here you can select uh, multiple or uh, different, different uh, resource group. Here I am selecting demo so i am giving it a name storage account so now it's east us after that here we will select lrs after that we'll hit on review and create So after final validation, we'll be able to create the storage account. Okay, so the name is already taken. So we'll go back and select a unique name worldwide. Just go back. So just select here. So here our validation is passed. Now we will create a storage account. Just hit on create. So our deployment is in progress. So it take one or two minute more. So it will take 30 seconds more. So here, your deployment is complete. 
then we will go to our resource. So here you can see that the storage account, storage account D one, two, three, four, five. So now under that newly storage account, we will scroll to data storage and we will go to container where we will create a new container. After that, just hit on container, give it a name. Container one I am giving, you can give any name. Here you can set all the advanced setting like encryption scope, public access level. So everything you can select here. After that, it on create. So now your container is successfully created. Just click on it. So here you can upload your files. Firstly, I will download something to upload here. So here just open bing.com so images so i will select uh, i will download any image just save it images at desktop so we have downloaded an image after that moving back to our Azure portal. So here there is a button upload. Select that file. So here just hit on upload. So here you just uploaded a file which was named as phone. Even you can upload multiple files here. Just hit on upload, then select the file and then hit on upload. Even you can change the access level from here also. Like who can read that, who can access to that particular container. So this was all about how we can create a storage account and how we can work with the blob storage. So going back to our storage account. So here you can also see different, different things like monitoring site in monitoring. You can see availability. You can see that what time we are using it. So everything is showing here. Even you can set some alerts here. You can go for metrics as well. So all the features are here under storage account. So this was all about uh, today's session. So after uh, practicing uh, these practical, uh, so to avoid the un uh, unwanted charges, we should always delete the store uh, that resource group for that. Just simply go to home page here. Just go to resource group, then select the resource group you want to delete. Just click the resource group here, then enter the name of that resource group here, then hit on delete. So here, even we can delete all the source group here. So now deleting the source group demo. Now going again to that source group, click on demo archive and click on just hit on delete. So this is way you can delete all the resource group. So sometimes it can take a lot of time depending upon the resources deployed under the source group. So it will get automatically deleted.
children, you can check the progress here. Here you can see deleting resource group demo. Then you can check also here deleting resource group demo RG. So now it will delete. Now moving back to our PPT. So this was all about today's uh, demo. So now uh, for upcoming events uh, by GTEC Learn, just open your QR code scanner and just scan this QR code and see the other upcoming webinars provided by GTEC Learn. Or you can also visit the following link where you can register yourself for upcoming webinars. So thanks for attending the webinar. So now there is a question time. You can ask a question in ch chat box related to the topic we have studied today. So now we go to our first question, which is how we can manage multiple subscription in Azure portal. Like, uh, I have already told you when we uh, were discussing management group, uh, like if you have multiple subscription, you can uh, create a management group and you can put all that subscription in a single management group. So now uh, if you want to apply uh, access policy, conditional policy, security policy or compliance policy, you can manage, uh, create that policy at a management group level, it will be applicable to all the subscription under that level. So next question. Okay, so we go to the next question. Apart from virtual machine, which other services we get under Azure Compute Services? Okay, so there are so many services. Let me show you again Azure, Azure portal. So we just go to here, all services. So under compute section, you can see that there are so many services like virtual machine, virtual machine classic, container instances, disk, app services, availability sets. So there are so many, like there are so many services here under the compute services of Microsoft Azure. Got it? So now moving back to our PPT and if you have any question, please ask. Okay, so we go to our next question. Can we delete all the sources in one go? Yes, absolutely. You can delete all the sources in one go. For example, if you have a, a one single resource group, under that source group, you have multiple virtual machines deployed. You have different different web services like uh, web app, uh, mobile app, so. If you have a storage accounts under that resource group. So if you want to delete all these resources in one go, simply just delete that particular resource group. So by deleting that resource group, uh, everything, every resource deployed under that resource group will be deleted automatically. You don't have to go on each resource and delete that particular resource, just go on that source group and delete all the resources by one go. So here's uh, our time's up. So we just close this session. But uh, thank you very much for attending this session. So we'll see you in next session. Okay, best of luck. Thank you.